What's up folks, I'm Mitch with Stone Coat Epoxy. We teach the do-it-yourselfer, like yourself, how to work with epoxy resin for your countertop, tabletop, floors, artwork, woodworking projects, anything with resin, we're gonna show you how to do it right here on Stone Coat Countertops on YouTube. Thanks for joining us everybody today. I'm gonna show you a real fast and quite simple epoxy technique with two spray cans. So first things first, when working with this stone spray, you wanna give it a really good shake. It actually spits out different color of almost 3D paint that give your piece texture and depth when you throw that epoxy on it. So give it a good shake. And you also wanna check the spray nozzle before you open it up on your piece. You wanna make sure it's shooting right. So I do that over here on the side of my table and I'll just Boom, see it's, it's blasting good. You don't wanna just open it up, that's gonna leave a big old wet spot. So light, short bursts at different depths, that's gonna change how much of the stone spray is applied and change the pattern just subtly. I'm going for a uniform speckled piece here and I'm gonna first start on my edges. So I'm just going a little bit. You can see how much is getting on the field. But you can see, oh yeah. That's perfect, that's all I want. You don't want to go too heavy on those edges. All right, I'm gonna hit that side there. Boom. Bingo. Perfect. All right, now that my edges are wrapped up, they got a good coating on them, just gonna get a little more over the field. I like how it's looking on the perimeter. It's a little less speckly here, so I'm just gonna address the whole surface. A few spritz is all that's needed. Make it rain stone spray. That can be a completed countertop. All I gotta do is pour clear stone coat epoxy over this. This project would be complete and this piece would look fantastic in your bathroom or your kitchen. I'm gonna take it up one more notch and combine these two spray methods and apply my white marble spray from Montana Marble. This stuff's mega hard to find. You always wanna test the spray tip to before going on your project just to make sure everything's working right. Bingo. I don't want too much of this because I really like this project the way it is. So maybe I just angle one here and angle one there. The method on this bad boy is I open it up and kind of fling it and you'll see it move and, and then as it lands, it moves organically, opens up. The stuff is like painted silly string. It's really cool once you put epoxy over it. Boom. See what I'm saying? Woo! See, it's so organic when you let it rain down. It's awesome. Boom. So in that motion, opens up that the, uh, marble spray to give you those fine little lines. I'm leaving this just the way it is. We're gonna let this stone spray and marble spray a good half hour to 45 minutes. We'll be back for the next step which is very simple. We're applying a clear coat of epoxy. Project will be complete. See you in a minute. That piece looks sick. My two spray cans have dried perfectly on my project. It's time to mix up some epoxy. We're going with normal stone coat countertop epoxy. Stone coat epoxy is a DIY friendly one to one ratio epoxy that you mix for two minutes. I'm gonna pour in part B first, and we're mixing up three ounces per square foot of countertop for this application. It's just a clear coat of epoxy. To mix the epoxy, you can use a paddle mixer on a drill, or you can use a paint stick. If you're gonna mix by hand with a paint stick, double your mixing time. If you're going with a paddle mixer on a drill, we're gonna mix for two minutes, keeping the paddle mixer from attacking the sides and bottom of that bucket on full speeds, because we don't want to crack that bucket. Midway through mixing, slow the paddle mixer to low, 
and rub the sides and bottom. Then you're gonna pick it back up to full speed for another minute. We're nice and mixed. We're gonna pour our epoxy in the center of our project. Then we're gonna get the notch trowel. I'm gonna trowel that amongst itself. What that does is it mixes my material an additional time. We're gonna spread the material evenly with that notch trowel over our project. We'll then chop the top to eliminate trowel lines and mix a third and final time. We mixed in the bucket, we mixed with our trowel, we're mixing with that brush. We know this project's gonna cure perfectly flat and perfectly hard because of the way we teach you how to mix our epoxy. We're gonna pour this in the center of our project. And then with light pressure, we're gonna use our eighth inch by eighth inch square notch trowel to lightly trowel the epoxy over itself here in a big mass. Now we're gonna, with light pressure, we're just letting that trowel glide across the project. We're gonna spread the material and that piece comes to life already and I haven't even torched the air out. As I trowel the material, it evenly spreads it and you can see it roll and, and mix here right on the surface again. Now that the field is pretty much covered, I'm gonna start working some epoxy over my edges. All right, when we evenly spread that epoxy with the notch trowel, it leaves behind iridescent trowel lines. They're gonna stay there if you let that cure that way. To eliminate those lines, that's when we bust out our nylon chop brush. This is a two inch nylon chop brush. These are available at stonecoatcountertops.com. They're pretty cheap. Pick these up when you grab some epoxy. They're really good for epoxy techniques and they're necessary whenever you're doing a clear coat. So step one, we're gonna pull on any loose bristles. If there's any loose bristles, we wanna remove them. These are some high-end brushes, so oftentimes none are loose, we're good to go. But you always wanna check any brush, that's a pro tip. All right, we're gonna take our brush and get it wet with the residual epoxy here left in our bucket. And then we're gonna take it and chop the top. We're gonna to use the heel of the brush, and just in a random fashion, chop the top. The chop brush eliminates those trowel lines after we evenly spread the epoxy, and it also is mixing our material one final time here on the surface of the project. Whenever I'm doing a clear coat of epoxy, especially for a customer's project, I'll use a fresh, brand new chop brush. If I'm making a bunch of samples that day in the shop, you know, to show customers, you can keep your chop brush fresh for the whole day by cleaning it out with acetone. So I'll have a jar of acetone, I'll chop it in there, get most of the epoxy out, and then I'll get most of the acetone out, and then you could use that chop brush on your next piece. But you know, if I'm doing a final project that's going in someone's home, I'll spend the five bucks, guys, and get a brush. So use this epoxy coated brush to coat your edges. Make sure all dry areas are wet, that way the epoxy will flow really well and uniform over these edges. Epoxy flows where epoxy is. It's a lot like water. So make those dry areas wet and you'll have a perfectly even coat of epoxy over all your edges. All right, that is done. The next step and final step to an epoxy clear coat, we're gonna eliminate the air we've incorporated into this epoxy while working with it, while chopping, while mixing, while troweling. It's quite simple and you have two options. You have a heat gun or a torch. We like to use a propane torch. It's the most efficient and effective way to eliminate the air bubbles. A close second is your heat gun. You're gonna put it on high and this, it's the same process with both methods. We're gonna sweep the surface of the project, covering the entire surface. Uh, start from one end, go all the way to the other, and we're gonna do that multiple times. We're gonna quickly re eliminate that right now with a blowtorch. You can see that's already clearing up the epoxy with just one pass. There's a big difference to that side and this side. So all the white milkiness is air. It's really easily removed.
All right, between torchings, let the epoxy cool a couple of minutes. We're pretty much out of air, but I could still. So a pro tip is you walk the lights from above over the surface of the epoxy, and that's gonna show you where you've missed torching. That's gonna show you where there's some air coming to the surface. Uh, when this thing is laying out perfectly smooth like a sheet of glass, you know no air is left. So I'm gonna give it another torch, let it cool, and then this project's gonna be ready to cure. It'll be cured and dry to the touch in 18 to 24 hours. You wanna keep your environment above 65 degrees the first few days of curing. If I were to install this project in a customer's home, tomorrow I'll come back and apply the ultimate top coat, the final piece in our epoxy system that will bring this countertop to extreme durability and last for years and years with normal kitchen and bathroom use and abuse. Because all my color effects are on my board and I've just applied a clear coat of epoxy, no additional clear coat to bring this back to food safe would be necessary. Stone Coat Epoxy is a DIY friendly countertop solution that's gonna save you 10 times your time and money versus going to that big box store for cookie cutter laminate. Guys, I hope you learned some tips and tricks that are gonna get you going on your first or 100th epoxy project using Stone Coat Epoxy. Thanks for watching and remember, from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this, we'll see you on the next video.